Okay, uh, I'm gonna cover some kind of miscellaneous things here, um, stuff that I think some of us probably already know at this point, but um, if we don't, this is a good review. Um, the first thing uh, that we're gonna talk about is an ammeter, um, which is a, a, an object that's going to measure current, um, and in that particular object, you're always going to hook it into series with whichever object you want to um, find the current for. Now, <clears throat> the symbol that you're going to see for any ammeter in a circuit drawing um, will look like this. Okay, uh, And I've drawn in uh, different ammeters that would have been connected in place given the resistor that we want to find the current that it's traveling through. So, um, as an example, if we had a circuit where the wire comes in and splits into two paths. If we wanted to find the, the current that's flowing through this resistor, we'd have to hook up an ammeter in series with it so that it passes through both. Same thing down here. Um, and then once, you know, it was just a, a plain resistor, you know, by itself, we'd again have to attach the ammeter here. Just know that this reading and this reading and this reading could all be different, okay? Now, each ammeter might have its own resistance. So if this was, say, like 10 ohms, maybe this ammeter is really a 1 ohm resistor or something like that, then together they would be 11 ohms. You'd have to treat it like that if you were trying to solve for current and stuff like that. But um, ideally, an ammeter should have zero resistance. That way, it doesn't require uh, any voltage drop across it. That would ultimately be what we'd want. We want the current basically just to pass right through no resistance whatsoever. Okay. Um, now, a voltmeter. And we've used these again. Uh, a voltmeter obviously measures the voltage or the potential difference across the ends of a resistor. So it's connected in parallel. Okay. So essentially what we're doing is we're allowing the current to come through here and then it has a path that it can take this way or through the voltmeter. But we ultimately want to measure it across the resistor. So we don't really want any current to flow through the voltage. So if we don't want any current to go through there, then ideally we would want the voltmeter to have an infinite resistance. Now, you can't really have the infinite resistance, but what you can do is you can make the resistance on the voltmeter so big that most of the electrons are just going to go through the resistor anyways. Okay. Now, I just want you to be aware when you do these problems, Okay, there might be problems that say, where should you place the ammeter in the circuit in order to um, measure the current through a certain resistor? I just want you to know that if you want to connect an ammeter, it needs to be in series with whatever resistor you want. Now, it could also come after that resistor, as long as it's before the two wires connect again. Okay. Same thing with a voltmeter. I want you to know that if you want to measure the voltage drop, put the two leads of the voltmeter on either side of that particular object. Okay. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is a potential divider. And it basically does exactly what it says. It's a device that produces a different voltage from a larger voltage. Okay. It divides the potential. This is the little symbol that you might see. And there's this little slider piece right here. Um, I actually have a really old rheostat is what it's called. Okay, And basically it looks like a bunch of coiled wire here. Okay, And there's a slider on it. Okay, Which means given it is in one position um, we use the entire resistor and if it was in another position it would bypass that resistor or it could be hooked up to another object and we could bypass that other object depending on where this is. Most common, uh, well not necessarily the most common, but a very common use of this thing would be a dimmer switch like on a light. If it's turned all the way in one direction you do, the light's not on, but if you crank it up uh, the light gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter because you're delivering a different voltage to that particular object. Okay, so that's just an example of one. Now, <clears throat> the equation that's up on the top um, is an equation that you might need to know. Okay, so this is talking about the total voltage of the circuit. Well, provided that <clears throat> this was not here, this little spot here, um, the total resistance is the combination of these two. So the voltage in is the current plus the, these two resistors in 
um, series. Okay. Now you could have had those two resistors in parallel as well. Then we'd have the one over, one over type of thing. Okay. Um, but here, the voltage that you get out, if you take the voltage across this resistor, is only the voltage across that resistor. So the V out is simply the current times the resistor two. So the current is going to be the same in two things that are in series. Therefore, you can come up with this equation that says the voltage out is equal to the voltage in. And then you can take your second resistor and divide by the sum of the first and second resistor. Okay, So that's, that's an equation that you could use. More often than not, I've seen it in problems where it's not asking for those actual values. It's asking what would happen if we did this and this and this. So I want to give you an example. <clears throat> okay, So this is, could be an example of an um, object where we've got maybe the um, uh, potential divider and a light bulb hooked up in parallel. So I've got the voltage, it comes, or the, my battery here, it comes up and now it could split. It can either go through this, the, the potential divider, which by the way is oftentimes called a uh, potentiometer, okay? Um, it can go through here or the current could pass through the light bulb, okay? Um, but there's a little slider that we can move back and forth. Now if the slider was in this position, if we just follow where the current would go, <clears throat> current would be flowing and it would have options. It can either go this way or it can come over here on this wire. But if I make a connection here, then that's going to completely bypass this light bulb. Okay? Because the, it'll take the path of least resistance, which a bare wire is least res, or has a smaller resistance than the light bulb. So the current would just come right through here and travel right back to this and go only through the potential divider. But if I move the slider over here, okay, now the current will flow through the light bulb down to here and now out and around. Now, with that slider mechanism, it could be anywhere along this variable resistor, this the the potentiometer. Meaning, if it was here, this would actually have a smaller resistance value than if it's over here. It would have a bigger resistance value. And that's what will deliver a different amount of voltage to this bulb out here. Okay. So another example drawn like this. Okay. If I had the little slider here connected to the light bulb, if I bring this slider over here, okay, it would actually connect now to the light bulb. So you'd have this resistor and this light bulb in parallel. But if I move the slider over here to this spot, then again, here's the current. It comes all the way through and then, oh, I'm sorry, I have that backwards. If I move it here, then it'll go through the light bulb. No, it won't. It'll go right here. My bad. Double take. Okay, if the current comes through here and there's a wire that connects to there, the bare wire is easier for it to go through, so it'll just go right through here and then through this. But if I bring this connection over here, now it either has to go through that resistor or through the light bulb. I apologize for that little mistake there. Okay, now these potential dividers are sometimes also just called a variable resistor. You might see that. A variable resistor is seriously just like it sounds. You are able to vary the resistance. So you might have a problem where they have like a 10 ohm resistor and then it connects to a variable resistor and they maybe we put a uh, 10 volt battery on there. Okay. Well when this is zero if we could turn the volt or the, the resistance all the way down to zero, then 10 volts and 10 ohms uh, would mean we'd have a one amp current. But if this had a maximum of 10 ohms, then we could have a, a mac or a, a smallest amount of current would be 10 and 10 is 20 ohms and 10 volts that'd be half an amp. So a variable resistor allows you to control your um, current. Now, the very last thing, and I'm just going to go through this really quick just because um, these might be things that they might ask, what happens if we introduce this to the circuit? These are some other types of sensors. You might run into something called a thermistor, uh, which acts like this. Uh, the resistance increases or decreases as the temperature increases. Um, this is kind of what happens in um, fire alarms. Okay, If it gets really hot, um, 
sometimes if the resistance decreases to a certain point, it triggers the actual alarm. Now the little symbol looks like this. It looks like a resistor and then there's a little line with a little end piece on here. Okay, uh, You can have a light sensor, uh, which if you shine light on it, it releases more charge, which in turn lowers the resistance. And generally the little symbol looks like this. These are supposed to be the photons striking that particular um, face. And then the last one is a strain gauge. A strain gauge is oftentimes used in, say, like bridge construction, because if the bridge starts to give, they want to know so that they can try to fix it prior to it collapsing. So in a strain gauge, there's a thin metal wire. Um, as it bows, it'll start stretching the wire. If you stretch the wire, it's going to increase the length while decreasing the cross-sectional area. The length goes up, the area goes down, therefore the resistance increases, and then that would set off uh, basically an alarm to, to alert people. So that is the basic idea between ammeters, potential dividers, and some other types of sensors that might be introduced to you. Okay.